Hey guys, welcome to the fifth game. Rancor on the verge of taking his first set. Masuchi already up a set. Fighting Spirit Mania, set two of seven. Rancor in the upper right-hand corner as the gray Zerg. Upper left-hand corner, you have Masuchi starting as the pink Zerg. And these matches are why I picked this grouping. Because that is, this is the quality of play I was expecting out of both of these guys. So I guess it just took a little bit for Rancor to wake up. I'm looking for Masuchi to go for that counterattack. Maybe you can see a first best of first game set that goes to seven with this set here. Overlord looks like it's going to have the advantage making its way towards Rancor's base. Bottom right-hand corner scout for Rancor. Going with Grey Zerg and Pink Zerg equivalently. Which actually brought up as the Star Wars memes were starting to sneak out. It was like... Why have we not seen that? We've seen almost every other color of lightsaber out there, even in fan whatever stuff, but nobody ever has the pink lightsaber out. Why is that? Like, I understand why you wouldn't have a gray lightsaber, but whatever. Anyway, light versus the dark, as it was mentioned. Also, there was a bit of discussion as far as, like, what, what do you call these bases? I just go with, like, upper right-hand corner, upper left-hand corner. We, we're going for, like, the clock metric. I'm saying, ah, one o'clock. This is more like one o'clock, whatever. Anyway, I digress. Overpool build for Rancor. Looks like we are seeing some sort of, looks like 12, so potentially a 12 hatchery for Masuchi. 12 pool. 12 pool for Masuchi. Build order advantage to Masuchi plus the scouting advantage, which does not bode well for Rancor. He is going to know spawn locations fairly early because of the overlords crossing one another here. Grabbing that gas, grabbing that spawning pool. Granted, build order advantage has not translated into flat out wins as of yet several matches and that's that's what i really enjoy seeing out of zvz that was actually something they were mentioning like jadong is they, everybody still considers jadong the master of zerg versus zerg and part of the thing they discussed in it was uh, aside from just incredible play it looks like he's already dropping a creek colony so this looks like it might be that build order once again where he's just going to go straight to layer skip zergling speed and try to play defensively from, from there masuchi's going to spot it much earlier Natural expansion is being grabbed, and my question is, is at these spawn locations, is Masuchi going to opt for Zerglings once again? And I'm almost curious to see whether he spends his initial 100 gas. Is he going to be in location to not spend that 100? So he is going for Zergling speed initially. <clears throat> Sunken Colony is there. Masuchi also going to have eyes at the very least and see that that layer is building. He could fold back to Evolution Chamber, or he can try to go for that Zergling Flood once again. This is not off a pure 12 hatch build. Keep in mind, this is still Overpool, so as far as pure Zergling Flood, it's going to be a little bit slower. Rancor up 12 drones versus 10 currently because of that Zergling production. Still no Zerglings being produced, so it looks like he just wants to try to defend it. Now, we do have eight Zerglings. Potentially, that can break through that line, but it looks like Masuchi's just going to sit back, at least for the moment, and play defensively. Initial Zergling scouting out just to get a look. Does see the Zergling count. Overlord slowly making its way this, to this location to go ahead and see what's happening. But I think, I'm not sure if the creep got scouted or not. To where Rancor knows what he's going up against, period. Spire being built. I don't think he cares, though. He's just seizing control. Lair is delayed. Rancor up a drone. Natural expansion advantage to Masuchi. Let's see if he can go ahead and get mining there and maybe even... If he can get that second gas up, that would be huge. But the early air count is going to go... So the Mutalisks will be out in the air much more rapidly. And the trick will be... So the Spire currently being protected. So Overlord now seeing this natural expansion. What Rancor could do is, is with the earlier Mutalisks, he could try to engage over the Zergling line and open something up. Spire just now being built, just at 130. So it's what, 300 health? I should actually do some math at some point. Not that I'm good at math in the middle of casts, and try to figure out timeline wise what that translates to as far as just raw seconds. Masuchi up in the overall supply count, up massively on drones. Natural expansion being grabbed for Rancor. And it looks like Masuchi's decision is to just drone up. Get the creep colonies down and try to play from that air advantage. Which, honestly, I think will give him, yeah, a strong advantage overall. Overlord's going to wander up. It's going to see those creep colonies being planted. So those mulesks, yeah, would have to eat some damage 
potentially. This Overlord can get taken out in the in-between space, which might even the game up overall. Now, I'm, yeah, as far as this style of play, I can see how Zerg versus Zerg has become less of a rock, paper, scissors match. So three Mutalisks out. Going to go ahead and engage this Overlord at the 12 o'clock location. This Overlord's going to try to make its way across. I think it will potentially be okay. It's going to be a while before... These mules should be able to get in position to go ahead and defend it. And so with this, yeah, Masuchi loses the Overlord. He's in the red. He can't build anything right now. This is going to give room for Rancor to go ahead and get his second gas up and drone up a little bit. And let's see if that Overlord even gets... If there's aggression right there. Rancor supply blocked himself uh, right this second. But yeah, has this moment to go ahead and catch up on drones. Is just three drones down is ahead in the overall supply count, but I think that is mostly in Mutalisks. The Mutalisks actually searching just in case there is an Overlord out in the field, but it looks like they were all drawn back. And Mutalisks now starting to be produced by Masuchi. So Masuchi with a lead in several senses. First of all, he's got the drone lead. Second of all, he's got that second expansion up, although he hasn't got that second gas established. It looks like this gas is mining for Rancor, so I'm going to give him the lead in that regard. So more gas... So it might come down to, and this is where the mathematics, I'm not entirely sure, how many drones you want mining versus how many you want in gas to have like the perfect amount of stuff coming in to just continue pumping mutalisks. Supply count lead is going in Masucci's favor. But critically, he's got the defensive air positioning to work with. He can go ahead and continue to, he's got to feel much more comfortable in his slot position. The mutalisks count currently in Rancor's favor. I'm not sure how long that's going to last though. And as things start to equalize, Masuchi is probably going to have an even Mutalisk count. It looks like that's just about the case now. Just a Mutalisk or two down. But in the meantime, he's going to have these Spore Colonies he can rely on, so he doesn't have to worry about counterattacks. So he can be the aggressor. He can be economically aggressive. It's up to Rancor to take a risk uh, to sneak in this match. It looks like Rancor's risk I missed was to go for an in-base third hatchery to get a Larva advantage. And again, if he can just, yeah, continue to pump the gas, if he can get a couple more drones snuck out, something along those lines, we'll have the larva to continue to produce those mutalisks, even supply count, which means this mutalisk count is much larger. Well, it's at least one or two larger, because mutalisk two supply. Mutalisk two supply, and yeah, maths again. I always have trouble doing maths in the middle of cast. Nerd, calling it from Twitch chat right there. Deserved. So eight mulas count right there, assuming that's gathered up, versus ten. So yeah, down two. Third hatchery now being grabbed from Masuchi. He's still up two drones, but behind Rancor overall in the supply count. And I'm wondering if Rancor, he's just kind of patrolling with the Scourge. I'm wondering if he's going to go for yet another expansion, go for a third expansion somewhere in the midst of this. And this is again where it starts getting dark. This is the dark arts of ZVZ, and it just comes down to playing a massive amount of games and just being... I don't, I don't know how they manage this. To know exactly when to produce drones. Rancor all of a sudden ahead in the drone count. When to produce a drone. When to produce an Overlord. When to produce a Mutalisk. To not fall behind in the midst of all of this. It's just like, how do you do that? It's just Dark Arts. Uh, Rancor up. Three drones now. Continuing to pump the Overlords in between. Once he, that Overlord is finished, he should be able to surge and build several Mutalisks behind that. Masuchi just kind of checking the corner. He might be able to sneak out and pick thing, pick a Scourge off or two. Full grouping of Mulus moving out for Rancor. Potentially field that. It looks like it is maybe Masushi switched. Yeah, he's got the supply lead, so now he's got the superior Mulus count. He's starting to move out in the midst of this. Go ahead and look at this. Looks like Armor 1. What is this? Drone actually idle. That hurts. Uh, as far as Armor upgrade, it looks like the Armor upgrade is once again... This is one thing that's been critical for Rancor. I think that was the discrepancy right there. Is he's oftentimes just been ahead in the Mutalist upgrades across the board. He is going to go ahead and grab this 3 o'clock base. And so the challenge is going to be to keep an eye on Masuchi's Mutalisks and Zerglings as they potentially try to sneak across the map to aggress. Because he does have the opportunity to do so with those protected spore colonies at the main. So can the Zerglings get snuck out? It looks like the Mulus have managed to breach across. The Scourge, I don't know if it's scattered that or not. It's going to go ahead and back off. Third gas being grabbed. If Rancor can defend that 3 o'clock location, that certainly will be a victory condition. 
that would be interesting if you, we played like a different sort of StarCraft match where it's like, that would be an interesting StarCraft like mobile game where it's like you just click a button or it's like enemies engage and you just click engage and it kind of gives you like a general, never mind. I, I, I'll, I'll share that thought later. This Overlord certainly going to get picked off. Rancor in the red, the Zerglings flooding forward. The Mutalisk's completely out of position. Drones getting annihilated there. Now the Mutalisk re-engaging. And it is a slew of an attack over the natural expansion. Usually attacks over the natural expansion are advantageous to the aggressor. Zergling still working there. Rancor all of a sudden plummeting to 18 drones. He is still going to get this third up, it looks like. And Masucci going to go ahead and try to grab his third at the 9 o'clock. So Rancor taking a significant amount of damage. Still way ahead in the supply count, though. Looks like he's able to refill up the drones. I don't know if he knows where he's at overall. Let's see if he can sneak up and find that 9 o'clock base. More Zerglings waking their way across. That's going to pin location. And the question is, is where do the Zerglings go? And keep in mind, Rancor is in the dark. He doesn't know whether Zerglings are coming across here or not. They're patrolling to the right. A sunken colony trying to be built there. It's not going to be in time. Two Zerglings are going to distract a lot of these Mutalisks here. And keep in mind, if the Mutalisks completely flood out, so it's aggression being the defense, the Zerglings sneaking into the 3 o'clock, are the Mutalisks going to be able to defend here in time before this hatchery goes down? Now the response, the Mutalisks moving out towards the natural expansion. So Masuchi again showing some amazing counterattack situations. Some Mutalisks look like they're trying to stay in between at the main. That's cleaned up. The Sunken Colony's down, but the re-engagement over that natural expansion. Rancor once again behind in drones. However, it looks like he might be able to pick up a lot of Mutalisk kills. But there's a counter-engagement here from Masuchi. Still has that level 2 armor advantage. Rancor able to hold that third. Another grouping of Zerglings moving across the map. Looks like that's going to be intercepted this time. There's not a Sutton Colony. Looks like immediately a drone just planting that Sutton Colony again. Rancor preemptively splitting his attack force. He's going to go ahead and drop a Creep Colony at the Natural as well, so he doesn't have to deal with this as much. Once again, head and drones, but Masucci doing a great job of keeping Rancor off balance. And it looks like he has managed to get that 9 o'clock base. Already has a Spore Colony right there. Two Spore Colonies to defend that and keep that up and running. Let's see if Rancor can dive into position to engage it. Level 1 weapons. Level 2 weapons? Level 1 weapons about halfway finished right there. Level 1 weapons just now finishing in the opposite corner. Rancor up three drones. Supply count's just about even. Rancor checking the 12 o'clock. He's not going to find anything up there. Does have that third gas now running. Second Sunken Colony being dropped. Yeah, I think the, the investment in the Sunken Colony is worthwhile at this stage. Sweeping back around is going to leave a single Scourge there. Now can he can he find time to sneak in and find the 3 o'clock? Three, three Spore Colonies, very easy to defend for Mizuchi, which is going to allow him to be an aggressor. More Zerglings making their way across. That's a lot of Zerglings. They want to try to... Looks like they're looking potentially for a Zergling counterattack. Very defensive play. However, this is allowing Rancor to get a l big drone lead. He's up to 30 drones. These Zerglings getting kind of picked off in between. And the game continues. Are we gonna? Is this a game where we're going to actually... F Oftentimes you'll see uh, at this stage of things, these things even get to Hive Tech. And if you can get Hive Tech up and get Defilers out... Amazing advantage. Right now, Rancor a little bit overgassed. He's got an immense amount of gas, but not enough minerals. Trying to resaturate. Attack count filtering. So, Masuchi very, very comfortable in his defensive position. However, I'm wondering about, like, the next stage of the match. And this is, again, Dark Art ZVZ, where I'm never sure when a player feels comfortable trying to sneak Hive Tech because it's such a huge investment. But currently, Rancor up six drones. Single Scourge is going to find this base well-established with all of its Zergling and Glory and Spore Colony, absolutely everything. Rancor has to know with this heavy investment in defense right here in both Zerglings and Spore Colonies that he's ahead economically. 34 drones versus 27 currently. Level 2 armor, level 1 weapons. Level 2 armor, a ways off currently. 
and a third something colony being dropped for Rancor. So it's interesting to see the dichotomy of like just ground and air comparatively. So three something colonies there. Scourge just checking the rest of the map just to make sure that nothing was snuckily taken. And a big air fleet in the middle. 24, 124 versus 108. So a 16 supply lead for Rancor. I was able to do maths right there. Go figure. These Mulas pocketed Masuchi trying to defend up. He's making his way to Hive. I missed this. So it looks like he might end up with the Hive advantage. And I think that is intelligent to do because Rancor's advantage is in the air. The Scourge going to dive in. I think it scouted it. Which means the pressure's on Rancor to make something happen before Defilers and Plague are fielded. 147 supply. More Mutalisks being fielded. He needs to pull the trigger before Defiler and Plague ends up somewhere on this map. Hive just finishing. More big supply leads. The Mutalisk flock is gathering near the 12 interior 12 o'clock location. 147. Greater Spire morphing first to get Devourers in this matchup. A single Devourer can make a flock of Mutalisks so much stronger. Does cost a Mutalisk to build, and they're very beefy air units. Somewhat vulnerable to Scourge. But the anti-air attack that they provide, that they have a slow down debuff, and they also make Glaives do more damage. Scourge moving up, checking out the advantage of the natural expansion. 160 supply now for Rancor, but he needs to get a move on and hit the timing before this Great Aspire finishes and a couple Devourers are able to even things out for Masuchi. Behind the overall drone count, regathering the large... Well, look at this fleet. This is now a fleet. I don't care whether you call it a flock or a murder or whatever. This is massive. Engaging now at the 12 o'clock location. Quickly able to take out one Spore. Moving it on the level 2 weapons advantage. Rancor diving in. He's probably just going to reinforce because it's all or nothing from here. More Mutalists reinforcing from both locations. You can see the reinforcements coming across the minimap. And there's a slew. And it looks like this might be overwhelming for Masuchi. More Scourge moving in. And there's just an overwhelming amount of Mutalists. Masuchi calling GG right there. Rancor taking the game and the set. Well played by Rancor. So we are now even one set apiece, and we are going to move on to set three. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.